712, yeah, the geeks are here. Give me an idea how big the deal the geeks are. Uh, Andre Borchberg, who's the pilot that set the world record by flying from Nagoya all the way to Hawaii, went to your studios for your show, what was it, a couple days ago? Last no, night. Or last, last, last night. night? And of course, last night was the, uh, the, well, this morning, early this morning was the big announcement that they are ending their around the world uh, voyage for a and while. For a while, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna restart it in 2016. But they came to the conclusion because of the uh, impact on the batteries and the fact that they have to change out all those batteries and the fact that they're entering into this period of time when uh, the day is getting shorter and they have to really go back and reanalyze, mm. you know, the cooling, the, the, the heating of the batteries right. and the cooling of the batteries that they're gonna stop now and then restart in 2016. So this long conversation that they had one-on-one -on -one with Andre Borchberg and who else was there? Uh, uh, Gregory Blatt, who's the pilot on the ground, coordinates mm. a lot of things for that massive team. That whole show is gonna be on their, their regular Bite Marks Cafe show tonight at five o'clock, mm -hmm. 89.3 on Hawaii Public Radio. And the story that they tell is very compelling. I mean, specifically, you know, normally with the Solar impulse for every takeoff and landing. There's live coverage and everything, mm -hmm, but yeah. there was none for their f departure here because they were in the middle of a training flight when they made the call while in the air to go ahead and try to make that journey. That's like mm. saying, I'm going to go out and test the new tires on my car, and while you're driving around the block, making the call to drive to New York, drive mm. across the country. Mm. So because they were really testing the batteries at that point, they felt that the damage was something that they wanted to replace all the batteries. And 1,500 pounds of batteries, mm. you can't quite pick that up at Best Buy. So they're here through next April, probably, mm -hmm. give or take. Mm -hmm. That's a great opportunity, though, for people here to get to uh, up close and personal and learn a little bit more about this great project. Right, there's a period of time between now and early next year where they're just gonna be putting the solar impulse in a holding pattern. They have the hangar over at Kalailoa. Uh, they're securing it right now. And I think once the, um, the date is, is kind of secured, around April of next year, uh, they'll be doing more programs locally with you know the kids and 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 the public to go and view the uh, solar impulse. Wonderful opportunity, and of course a lot of coverage are about Hawaii as well around the world as they uh, keep watching the solar impulse too and wait for its takeoff heading for Phoenix next. All right, let's get to Pluto. Also, I mean uh, these two stories today both are great scientific uh, successes. Yeah, mm -hmm. pushing the limits of technology. I mean they launched this thing in 2006. That was when Facebook first opened its doors to the public. That was before the first iPhone. And I can't think of a thing that I own in 2006 that I could have pushed a button, let alone launched it into space, and have it do exactly what I wanted it to do in 2015. And, and that's right, exactly what you wanted. It had, there was a 22-hour window where it had to collect all of the data. And so far, indications are they, they got everything they wanted, right? Well, you know, if you think about it, back in the, before New Horizon, the image that they had of Pluto was a, 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 basically a nine-pixel image, right? So it's very low resolution. And now they're getting high resolution photos back. The, the camera that they had to construct for this mission had to function in like 56 degrees, minus 56 degrees centigrade. So really, really cold weather. And, and you know, to have it operate over this 10 year period to actually get there is simply amazing. Nine and a half years plus three billion miles it travels and it works. It's going 7,100, miles an hour. I mean, it's, I can't even imagine yeah. that speed and to take a picture while you're flying past it. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I think we actually have the sound of uh, <laughs> the New Horizon <laughs> spacecraft going by Pluto. Craig, do we have that? It just, it goes, it goes. Kind of like Tuesday, Kind of like, kinda like right? Tuesday, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's what it sounded like. Yeah, that's yeah, anyway. <laughs> Well, that's amazing. And we'll look forward to the show tonight where you talk to the Solar Impulse guys, Andre Borsberg, the pilot that set the record. That's at 5 o'clock, 89.3, the Bite Marks Cafe. Right, we've dedicated the entire 60 minutes to them. So, you know, a lot of information, probably that doesn't get covered in, in mainstream, but, uh, you know, we'll get into the details yeah. on the show. And they knew that the delay was coming, but they couldn't talk about yeah. it. That must have been really painful. It was tough. Uh, yeah, Brian <laughs> and Bert, thanks so much, guys. The geeks on the show with us every once in a while. We, we love it when you are. And we're going to do a little dance here as we had to break. Uh, so. More on Sunrise <laughs> coming up. on 